Dr. Professor P.C. Manoria at the Second World Congress Cardiometabolic Medicine, Mumbai, 28-29 February. And with me is uh, Dr. Professor Prakash C. Didwania, globally renowned cardiometabolic physician. The last couple of years has witnessed a sea change in diabetes care. Gone are the days when diabetes was merely managed by glycemic control. We now have two new blockbusters, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists, which are powered to improve cardiorenal outcomes. So Dr. Didwania, how these agents are going to affect Indian diabetes? Because in India, diabetes occurs at a younger age and is associated with lots of problems. Well, I think that's an excellent question. First of all, I must congratulate you in putting this Congress together, despite all the challenges of COVID and all that. So congratulations. Yeah, I think you raise a, an excellent question. I mean, as we know, India is the diabetes capital of the world. We have so many younger people who have diabetes. We have so many older people who have diabetes. And I think management of these patients has been always a challenging issue. Now, we have been predominantly treating them in India with sulfonylureas of various kinds or insulin. And those two drugs we know over the long haul, particularly for cardiovascular uh, events or cardiovascular uh, risk, are not good drugs. These two newer drugs that you just mentioned, the SGLT2 inhibitors and the GLP-1 agonists, are probably totally game-changing therapies in the sense that both of these drugs work in a unique way. On the one hand, the SGLD2 inhibitors work by hemodynamic mechanism because their predominant action is on proximal renal tubule, excreting the glucose, and that glycosuria along with natriuresis that it produces because of the commonality of uh, SGLT2 uh, molecules as well as with sodium hydrogen exchanger produces very good diuresis as well as there are many actions it has on cardiac metabolism and other things. These drugs have been extremely I must say in my 55 years of career, I have never seen a class of drug that has surprised us so much. Nobody expected them to do as good a job uh, in terms of cardiovascular outcome. Now, these are not the best anti-glycemic or hypoglycemic agents, but they do the good job on an average about 1% reduction in hemoglobin A1C. But they are wonderful in terms of reducing the risk of a sort of life-challenging uh, cardiovascular event that is heart failure. And diabetic patients, as you know, are at high risk of heart failure. We have shown 20 years ago that heart failure patients, about 40% of them have diabetes, and we know that 40% of patients with diabetes have heart failure. So this is kind of hand-in-hand -hand kind of thing, and these drugs are phenomenal in reducing the risk of heart failure hospitalization. But now the recent data from DAPHF and DELIVER and all the other studies have shown that they can even prevent the onset of heart failure. So I think these are game changers and these will be phenomenal. Now the GLP-1 agonists are another wonderful class of agents because what they do is they make uh, effective uh, the insulin that we have, the activity increases and they are very, very uh, unique in terms of reducing the risk of macrovascular events. As you are well aware, the many trials, starting with the LEADER trial and then subsequently SUSTAIN-6 and others have shown that all of these agents together predominantly reduce the macrovascular events. Now, one of the point of uh, confusion here is in some studies, the myocardial infarction risk was reduced. In other studies, stroke risk was reduced. So we are just exploring. I think we are in this era of GLP-1 agonists where we were in beta blocker era 25 years ago, but I think this will all be sorted out. In addition, these GLP-1 agonists also are wonderful in reducing the uh, weight, in which is a predominant problem. And they are metabolically quite effective because they also have good effects on lipids and other metabolic parameters. Initially, SGLT2 inhibitors were introduced as anti-diabetic agents, but now all of us know they've become the loved ones for cardiologists and Absolutely. for the nephrologists. When we look at SGLT2 inhibitors, as we said, they can be used across the spectrum of heart failure, preserved ejection fraction, reduced ejection fraction. Uh, they produce a reduction in the cardiometabolic profile by decreasing blood pressure and by decreasing weight, they do not produce any significant hypoglycemia. They also improve, slow down the trajectory of CKD and postpones dialysis. So barring few contraindications like genital infections or but very are, low those, EGFR. Those are not contraindications, uh, genital micro precautions. Infection, precautions. So yeah. can they be used for all patients of uh, diabetes to type 2 diabetes? In my opinion, if the cost was not consideration, they would become number one class of agents in 
patients, particularly those who are have, have cardiovascular risk or at risk of heart failure. As you know, we I have served on the heart failure guidelines for ACCHA for many years. Uh, these guidelines recently came uh, last month and emphasizing the SGLE2 inhibitors are recommended all the way from prevention of heart failure to the treatment of heart failure as part of a standard therapy, which has been again a phenomenal change in the spectrum because no other anti-diabetic drug has ever been recommended to this level. If uh, we have DAPA and EMPA for heart failure. So how do you select between both these agents? Both have shown good data. Well, I, as you know, I have been a trialist for a long time and I would go with what is considered as a prospective trial, which is only DAPA HF. DAPA uh, trial was a prospective trial. I was investigator also for EMPA uh, in, in the, you know, both the preserved trial and all that. And I think both of the agents are good. But if I can, it probably, my choice would be to go with dapagliflozin, but I don't think it matters. If again you look at the trial data, which I'll show tomorrow, across the board, the reduction in heart failure aspiration is identical in all three trials. Now, of course, the risk of heart failure may be different in different cohort. And unfortunately, in the three trials, the kind of patients that were randomized were different. So that's why you see somewhat of a little variation in the risk reduction for hospitalization for heart failure. But these drugs universally work in all patients. Uh, for CKD, we have the CREDENCE trial for diabetic CKD and DAPA and EMPA has shown benefits both in diabetic CKD and non-diabetic. So faced with a situation of diabetes with CKD or diabetes with non-diabetic CKD, what would be your preference? Well, I think uh, in that case, uh, the benefit has been again seen across the board. And I would say, again, the data prospectively has been uh, with Credence was a specific trial done with canagliflozin. So I would consider if you go with evidence-based, that will be the first choice. But I don't think it matters. I think clearly all three work with the same mechanism and they all three have safety records and will be quite effective. So what is your viewpoint? These SGLT2 inhibitors, should we consider the molecule of the decade? I've written, as you know, I, I, what I wrote, I wrote an editorial on this uh, last year about this, uh, uh, the uh, SGLE2 inhibitors, the wonder drug for the decade, yeah, and no question about it. Now with GLP-1 uh, receptor agonist, the main problem they were available is injectable therapies. Yeah. Now we have oral semaglutide available in India also. So how do you look at oral semaglutide for the Indian diabetics? I think these are wonderful choices, but I was just at the booth upstairs for uh, Rebelsius, and fortunately the costs are still prohibitive. Each pill is around 400 rupees, so that's not very easily digestible. Obviously, there are a lot of rich, fat people, diabetics, they can afford it and there it should be utilized. But the cost of these drugs, as uh, any other drug before, will come down as more utilization is there. So I think I would expect in the next uh, year or so, the cost of oral semaglutide probably will drop to at least 50% of what current value is. Uh, many diabetics in the long run develop CKD, they develop heart failure, they develop ASCVD. So what about combination of both these uh, wonderful molecules, SGLT2 plus uh, GLP-1 yeah, receptor? They, they can be utilized, but we need more data. I don't think I'm ready yet to recommend uh, routinely combination of these agents, but individualizing in patients where needed, perhaps one can consider it. But I think there are, as you are well aware, there are several trials going on looking at the combination of these two agents. So what big messages would you like to give to the Indian physicians for the use of these agents? Well, I think a, main, a good message would be the whole perspective on diabetes care has changed. Diabetes is not now the do disease of the doom. I think diabetes can be treated, can be treated very effectively, and we can reduce the risk associated with cardiovascular event, with diabetes and cardiovascular events, kidney disease, those are the two major killers in diabetes patients. Now we have these drugs that work phenomenally in these patients. So that, that is number one. The other thing I mentioned upstairs earlier in the symposia is that there is a study that is an observational study that just came out in several thousand, I don't remember, 40,000 patients, looking at when metformin was started as a first-line agent in routine care versus SGLT2 inhibitor was started as uh, routine, as, as a first-line drug. And they showed that SGL, in this, this is not a randomized trial, this is an observational study, that SGLT2 inhibitors, when it started as the initial therapy, trump over metformin and showed clearly that it was better for cardiovascular event. 
there are other trials going on and we'll need that. And uh, as you may be well aware, the ADA has also taken a very strong stance in saying that we don't need to uh, yes, stick with do. metformin as a first line drug except for the cost factor. So thank you, Dr. Ridwania, for pleasure. very precise answers and I'm sure they will leave an everlasting imprint on the mind of the audience when they thank listen. You very thank much. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.